Okay? So, uh, today's homework day. Any questions about the homework that's due? Mm hmm Because they asked, like, one of them was said, use the character. Mm hmm And so we just write the character. We wouldn't have to convert it into, like, hex or something. Right. Or okay. That would be similar to um, here in figure 5.11, how you do character output, and you just put the character and use immediate address. Okay? Can you tell us this is Similar to, like, figure 5.11. <laughs> Right? I don't know how to draw a bracket very well, so it, it is a bracket. That looks like a three. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Then the other one was to actually, instead of using the character... Then you had to convert it to that. Well, it would it'd be to use the character output instruction, but to put a decimal constant there instead of a character constant there. But then what would happen is, you see the assembler will assemble it the same way. Are you with me? So if you looked at the object code, the object code would be identical. And, so, and, and it's the object code that determines what happens when the computer executes. Are you with me, mm -hmm. sports fans? Oh, speaking of sports fans, any Giants fans here? <laughs> well, less of a Patriot. I hate the Patriot. <laughs> well, at least it was, a, it was a close game. I mean, it was kind of an exciting game, right? Mm -hmm. So. I liked the car commercial where the car was dropped out of the airplane? Oh, right. That was cool. Right. Yeah, then there was the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys alive when Apple did its famous 1984 commercial? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard about it or have you seen it? Uh, it was a famous Super Bowl commercial that only ever aired one time, ever, and that was on the Super Bowl. And it was the famous 1984 commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, should, you look up Apple 1984 oh, commercial. Like the whole, the uh, well, I think it might have been in 1984. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was a takeoff. It may, I wonder if it was in 1984 or if it was because it was about the 1984 book. Oh, I read that book. Oh. That's good. It was good. It's where she slings the sledgehammer. There are all these drones, yeah. you know, and then she slings the hammer into the I screen think. and it, ah. Uh, no, it wasn't that long Was it? It's famous. Oh, it it's a it famous. 22nd of January 1984. Oh, so it did air in 1984, but it was a takeoff on the 19 on the George Orwell's 1984. Okay, I guess we got a little off topic, <laughs> which is all right. So is everybody clear on the homework? Okay. Um, now, I think we have an exam coming up here, right? It's Thursday? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I'll have to have your exams, uh, uh, sorry, I'll have to have your homeworks um, graded for you and back, I'll have your homeworks graded and back to you tomorrow and we can talk about what's going to be on the exam. Okay. okay. So we'll, we'll finish up a few little topics here and then we'll be, and then we will be finished with the material for the exam on Thursday. Okay. So um, the next item then that we're going to, uh, that we will learn is the string output instruction. Now, what is a trap? What's a trap instruction? It does a lot of stuff. Yes, it's one. Actually, that's a good. That's a good uh, description. It does a lot of stuff, because what happens is you think it's just one instruction, but really what happens is uh, when you execute that instruction, it jumps to the trap handler and it does a whole lot of stuff for you behind the scenes. And do you remember the two trap instructions that we've... Is character in, is carry a trap instruction, yes or no? No. No, it's not. That's it just does one, inputs one character and that's the one thing that it does. And then is caro a trap yes. instruction? Caro? Yeah. No. Oh, no. Deso? Deso, yeah. So character input, carry and caro, those are not trap instructions because they just do, they just input one character or they output one character. And it, it only takes one, one instruction to do it's, that, it's to do that throw, one. That's the other trap. Yeah, so there's, there's three. The deci, 
Actually, we did. We traced. Did we trace? I think we traced Desi and Desi Deso. And Deso. Yeah. Remember, we 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 were able to go ahead and say, trace the trap and move. When you do Desi, it actually branches to the trap handler. The operating system provides that service for you. It does all that all that stuff, and then boom. So Desi Deso. Now, and so now here's a, a third a trap instruction is the string output instruction. So the mnemonic for it is STRO S T R O, as shown in this slide. The instruction specifier is 01000 and then AAA for the addressing mode. And um, here's how you use STRO. The way you use STRO is you have to give STRO a string of ASCII characters. Now the nice thing about STRO is that, is that instead of giving it a string of ASCII characters and then you have to do output each character Carol, 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 Carol. What Stro does is you give it a string of ASCII characters and it outputs the entire string in one instruction. So in the Stro instruction in the trap handler, there's a loop that loops through and and outputs each character one character at a time. But in order for it to work, it needs a some terminating sentinel value. You, are you with me? Because it's a loop, how do you know how, how does it, how's it going to know how, how many times to loop through and output those characters? Mm -hmm. So it needs, it needs a terminal, it needs a terminating character. Well, the way it works is that there is, um, it's what we call null terminated. So if you, if you look up in the ASCII chart, do you remember what the, so there'd be the inside back cover. What is the very first, zero. it's zero, zero, yeah. So, so, it, so, the stro out, so the stro character needs a null, ter, a null terminated, after you have all, after you give it all the characters, then the last thing has to be a null character, which is the sentinel. So that makes the loop stop. So it won't just keep going forever and it knows when to stop. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So here is on figure uh, 5.12 is a program that shows how the STRO output works and it's that same program that we uh, demoed before that had that was outputting each character one character at a time only this time it's outputting it all the, the entire string of characters with the stro command. Now, one thing that one other thing that we've done differently in this version of the program is now we know how to put all of our data up at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So look, the very first instruction is branch to zero 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 D. So that branches around the data. And now what? Now what are we branching around? First of all, we're branching around the dot block with two bytes, yeah, and that's the storage for the integer. But now look what else we have. Now we have a dot ASCII string. So it's dot ASCII, but now look what it is. It's double quote, and then it's space plus space one, space equals space. And now, after that last space, how do we put in the empty the empty character well so now we have this bash x zero zero so what happens is in the dot ascii dot command there is a set of special characters that are not printable okay and you can put you can actually put any you can actually put any ASCII value in by specifying what that what you want that ASCII value to be in in hex. And so when you do bash x zero zero, it doesn't put the bash and then the x and then the zero and then the zero. That bash x zero zero is all just one ASCII character. Are you with me? So it's a quoted it's a bash quoted character. But that's basically the sentinel, right? And that, it, and the reason we put it in is because it's the sentinel. So if you look, so if you look at the column where the uh, machine code is generated, what's the two zero? You see on line zero at memory location zero 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 five, the two zero is the space, and then the what? 
what's that, is that 2B or 2A? 2B. And then the 2B is the plus sign, and then the 2, 0 is the next space, and then, notice it goes down to the next three line. And then the, the 3, 1 is the 1, and the 2, 0 is the space, and the 3D the is the equals, and then the 2, 0 is the space, and now what did that bash X, 0, 0 generate? What did the assembly, zero, zero. that's the 0, 0. Now is everybody clear on that? Okay, and you can put another, you, there are, are other characters, you, you can look at the, at the online documentation, um, or I think the book even has a few examples of some more, uh, other characters, but if you like put bash n, that's the new line character. So that works just like you're used to having it work in C, in C++. You know, bash n is a new line, you can do bash t, I think is tab, and you know, whatever. But it's also, Bash if but if it, but if you do bash x that means that what's coming after the x is a is two is a two bytes of hex, I mean yeah two hex digits which is one byte, not two bytes it's two hex digits which is one byte and by, actually I designed the um, we we designed the um, this dot ASCII character you know all these conventions to work just like they do in C plus plus, so you can actually use you can actually do bash x whatever, in C++, and it will, uh, it will generate that whatever character you want. So it's all, this all carries over. Okay? And so now look what happens. So now, um, after we branch to 0x000d, so 0x000d does deci, so that gets the number, and it gets it, it inputs it into what memory location? Desi input to, to three using direct addressing, but what's at three? That's, that's those two bytes are reserved, right? Okay, and then deso outputs that number. And now, here's our stro. So now look, what addressing mode do we use for stro? Direct. Direct addressing, and when we, and we do direct addressing, what do we give it? We give it the, the address of where we want it to go. Yeah, well the address of the first byte of the string. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then that will trap and it will loop through and output them all until it gets to the sentinel. So tell me, you guys, what would happen if you forgot? What would happen if you if you were a little careless and in that dot ASCII space plus space plus one space equals spa equals space and then you just did and you didn't put that sentinel? Tell me, what would Stro do? It would keep reading the next keep character. It would keep reading. And what would the next character be? A plus. No, it would be the what? The it would be the what? The one. Hmm? Maybe the decimal of the one, the 30, like that. It would keep going down. It would, it would go to, to, to the 31, 31 which would Yeah, yes, the, the 3, 1 at, at address 0, 0, D. And it would interpret that 3, 1 as a what? As a 1. As a, yeah. One. One. Oh, maybe we should demo that. Mm -hmm. And then it would stop. And then it would stop because that next one happened to be stop. Mm -hmm. hmm. and then it would maybe we should, de that might be a fun demo to do. Because we were able to predict what, it's, what it would be doing. You see what I'm saying? Well, then wouldn't it try to interpret 03 as an instruction? No, because the st actually that instruction would already have been, the DESI instruction would already have been executed. So the STRO would just be outputting that. Oh, okay. I, th I, think, I think the only difference is there would be an extra one before, before the negative 478, I think. Yep. That's what I think too. Hey, maybe we should. I didn't think about doing that, but if our simulator works well, I mean, it, let's do that. Let's try that. Okay, okay, a little, <laughs> a, a little uh, spontaneous demo. Okay, so here's our spontaneous demo. Uh, let me see, which uh, figure was that? Do you remember? Uh, 511, no, that's... Uh, It'd be 512, okay? So here's our figure 512. See how slick it is? We can just bring this example right up and copy to source. And if our input is negative 479, so what we'll do is we'll just run it and make sure it outputs. So there's negative 479 plus 1 equals negative 478, right? Mm -hmm. Now, check this out, you guys. Here's our prediction. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so boom, 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 boom. Are you with me? And, and if we run this, it should say 479 plus 1 equals, 
space, and our prediction is what? One. One, and then, yeah. Oh! Doesn't even do it. It doesn't do anything. It must it's, be a truck. It's still looping? Whoa. Maybe the, maybe the trap handler won't even function without it. Well, no, it should. Could never find the sunken hole. But shouldn't it gotten what, a what did it do? What did it do? Yeah. Um, Will it interpret did it stop? stop? Did it stop? I don't think it stopped. It didn't stop. It would have shown something. Wait, um, because the the ver the branch goes to zero D, you'd have to change the branch to zero C. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. We forgot to change the branch. Oh, good call. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The branch. So, so so we have to go to zero. So now here, let's bring this up, and it should go to zero 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 C. Right. That's what happened. Okay. So we have to change this to zero 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 C. So, C, right? Mm -hmm. And now let's run it and see what happens. Perfect. Oh, and there we have it. Negative 479 plus 1 equals, and then it did that extra run, and then negative 4. Yeah? We had to change how much it, the block went through. Right, the branch. Well, the branch was, you know, when, I, when, we, when we decreased this by 1, oh, then we had to branch to one before. So what, what I think what we did is we branched to a stop, right? Yeah, we, branched right to a we, stop. Bran we branched to a stop, and that's why it stopped. So if this is D, actually here, that would be a fun thing to do. If we, we left this at D, let's build this, and now let's start debugging and watch what happens. It's, it's going to branch, but now it's going to branch to 0, 0, D. And so if we single step here, it, it does, oh yeah, it does, it does nothing. And we're about to execute a what? A stop, I think. So, because what's the program counter at? Zero, zero. D. Yeah, D, but it can't show here because D is... Not the start. D, yeah, D is not the start of something, so it's, it's going to execute this. And so when we single step there, boom, it did, it did the stop. Huh. See, and the stop was at uh, the program counter, and now the program counter is at zero, 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 E, because it incremented by one. Mm -hmm. So it actually, that, that's even more instructive, because what it did is it took this, it took this zero, zero, and interpreted that as a... Stop. Oh, this was a nice Good demo. demo. All right, so that's the end of the spontaneous demo. Okay, so that's the end of our demo. And here then is the program that illustrated the STRO instruction. Now, uh, I just want to comment here. Um, even though it's possible to put the dot ASCII up there and up at the top of the program. What's going to happen is when we do most of our programs later on, um, all of those dot ASCII string constants, they're all going to be collected at the bottom of the program. So I just did it this way to show you that you can do it. You, you can branch around it and it illustrates how you have to put that that um, sentinel there. Actually, what happens is you could put that dot ASCII down af between the stop and the end in that situation, if you forgot to do, if you forgot to put the sentinel value, it might still work because that wouldn't matter because, it would just have because there there would be a zero after mm -hmm. the dot ASCII. You see, it, it it depends on what's in memory at that place in memory. Would you need to put a stop before your end, or would it just act as the same thing? Wouldn't you put the dot ASCII after the stop though? Yeah, what I'm saying is you could put the ASCII after the stop, but before the dot end. Okay. But what was your question? I was wondering if a program like this would need a stop, like, or even without. Well, but then you would be relying on the on the prop on the on the possibility. If you if you wrote a program without a stop, you would be relying on the possibility that the no, that the next the content of the memory location after the last instruction is a zero zero. You can't guarantee that. Mm -hmm. But aren't you trying to do that here? If you put it after the stop and you didn't put a sentinel, because the, the dot end... Yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Frequently, the next one after the dot ASCII would be a zero. And so you might do that and it might work, but it might be incorrect because you left off the sentinel and it wouldn't work all the time. 
but it would be a coincidence that it would work. If you, did you get the drift of what I just said? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah? Are we, is that, are we good with that? Okay, so now, here, now this, um, actually that demo that we did is a good little segue to what we want to emphasize next. Because you understand now that the, any time you run, a program is running on the computer, what language is that program written in? It's written in machine language because, you know, is all the computer does is it just goes through that von Neumann cycle in the CPU, right? That's all it does. And so how it interprets those bits depends on whether they got fetched, those bits got fetched and stored in the instruction register, or whether they got loaded into the accumulator, right? But they're all just bits, okay? So, here's the thing. We, remember, we had two kinds of operation, two kinds of assembly language statements. First of all, we had instructions with mnemonics, and then we had pseudo-ops. Mm -hmm. So, the, the dot commands uh, set the bit patterns at assembly time, but what happens is the executable statements interpret bit patterns at runtime, right? So now I have, I uh, want to give you a little pop quiz now, all right? So here's a little pop quiz. I would like to know in figure 5.13, so don't open your books, if you probably don't have them anyway. <laughs> Actually you actually brought one. You actually brought one. Oh, good. Mine's on my computer. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. You got your electronic version. So, okay, so, but here, uh, this this program is in the book with the output there, with the output shown. But if I didn't show, if I don't show you the output, I would like to see if you can predict what the output would be for this program. Um, now, what I've done is I've given you not only the program, but I've given you the program, not only the source, but the program listing that includes the machine code that's generated in that second column. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And I've given, uh, and, and so, let's, let's, let's just take a few minutes and see if you can. Without the book? Yeah, without the, use the oh, you can use the tables. Oh, okay. But of course, well actually you don't even need to use the tables. I mean, can you tell from this? I, I think I think you should be able to tell. Oh well, no, you might need, need the table. ASCII, right? Yeah, yeah, you pro probably need an ASCII table. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just pause here for a few minutes, and I'll. The first one's negative two. Yeah, that's what I got. And the next one's zero, or is that not right? No, that's, that's wrong because it, it needs to do the whole. It interprets the whole message. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we won't pause. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk, let's yeah let's let's see if we can predict this. So you say the well, first output is going to be negative, negative two. two. Now why is the first output going to be negative two? Because it's a decimal output of, of direct addressing at zero 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 three, which is FFF. And you look at zero 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 three, and that's FFFF. Okay, so that okay. F -F -F. Okay, so that's negative two. And now what is the? Got it. Now and now what is the uh, Caro bash n Hello. immediate? That's the start of the next line, so yes. it'll go to the start of the next line. Mm -hmm. Oh, the comment here is giving it away. <laughs> uh -huh. Although, so now what are we doing? Decimal output from what? Zero, 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 five. Zero, zero, five. It is zero. Yes. No, what Ben was saying, though. It's 85. Direct addressing. From zero, 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 0005, direct addressing. It's 85. Yep. What's puzzling about this, this next output? It's outputting a decimal number which should be two bytes. In fact, it will always be two bytes. Right. That's the point. So what, is, so what are the two bytes at 0, 0, 0, 0, 5? It's Starting, zero, zero, it's a zero, 0, and then the 5, 5. But the 5, 5 is included in the deso. Mm -hmm. There's no lines okay. in the memory, right? There's no, I mean, those, that byte is shown on the next line, but it's all just byte addressable, right? Mm -hmm. So that's so, so so it's so how did you figure that out? So it's zero zero over here. Five, so five. so here the hex is zero zero five five. So you gotta do what? This is the ones place, this is the sixteens place, 
So you got to do 16 times 5 is what? 3, 0, 3, 5. Is that 80? Mm -hmm. And then plus 5. So this is times, this is plus, so it's 85. So we're, our prediction here is this is 85. And then what does it do? Um, the output, so third is a character and the fourth is a character. Uh, yeah, output, a new line. So it already tells us what the third is, which is U. So it's capital U, and then the fourth is P, lowercase U, and then character output from 008, but what is 0008? Zero, 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 That's 76. Seven zero, which is hex p. Right, so up. it's up. So deco outputs two bytes, whereas caro outputs one byte. That is really important point. The, yeah. the answer is yes, and that was a really good observation. Deso always outputs two. You, when what you give deso mm -hmm. is if it's direct addressing, you're giving it the first byte, and it takes that byte plus the next byte and it interprets that as a decimal number. Of course, if you're using immediate addressing, it's the two bytes of the operand specifier. Okay. All right. normally. Right. Well, I mean, it could be stored using any, any of those constants. I mean, here, you could do this. How about, could, could you figure this out? Suppose, the, so, suppose it was Caro, no, sorry. Suppose it was, suppose you had this instruction, deso, Deso, quote, H, quote, immediate. Could you figure out what this, what, what this would do? What, yeah. what this output would be? Yeah. Well, what, first of all, what would the assembler do? It would look up the... It would take this it, capital H, it would, put the, it would make it the ASCII value, and it would put that in the... Do you have to do 48? Well, here, here, let's... And it would put that in the instruction in the instruction in the operand specifier. So let's translate this. Actually, here let's translate this. Well, how how would you first of all how would you translate deso using immediate addressing? Okay, so the H is forty-eight in hex. Yeah, but first, we, what, what about the whole instruction? Deso H. So what would deso? How how would you translate this? Let's. This is a good review. The object code. Yeah, the object code. What's des deso? It's not five one. It's. it's Can five you look up deso on the inside front cover? Three eight. Inside front cover? Oh, I have it on my homework. Oh. <laughs> but immediate addressing. Three eight. Mm -hmm. Does everybody agree with that? I don't. I think it's three. Nine. Immediate. Immediate though. It's immediate zero. Okay, that is, that is so it's 3.8 and then what would the and then what would this what would this be? How would this be translated? By the assembler. So you have zero zero. So it'd be zero zero. And then you have to And then what would the hex what would the hex for H be? It's forty eight. Four eight? Mm-hmm. Okay, so does everybody does everybody agree with this? I, I don't have my yes. notes and Okay, so this is tran okay. So it would translate to this, but now when it executes, what would it execute? It'll output. It'll take this and it'll say, "Oh, decimal output, mm -hmm. immediate addressing." So it would interpret this as a decimal number. So what would come out? Eight yeah, it would be yes. Here again, sixteen times four, twenty-four, four, five, sixty-four, and then plus another eight, right? So this is times, and this is plus. So it'd be 72. I think what would come out here, I, if you did this, the output would be 72. Somebody have the simulator? Do, do deso h comma i stop dot end. Deso quote capital H quote comma i stop dot end. And run it real quick. Why is it that it does zero zero four eight instead of four eight zero zero? Seventy two. Seventy two. We were right. Because it's two bytes in that one. Because anytime you put a character constant in a as the operand specifier, it always puts it on the right. Okay. Thirty eight zero forty eight zero zero. It puts it in the right half. 
and, and was this correct? Was this three eight zero zero four eight? Are we good? Still question? No. no. So if, if you had like deso eight five comma i. Okay. Suppose you had. Let's, okay. Let's do it again. So suppose you had deso eighty five yeah. like this. Eighty five comma i. Then this would be three eight. Now we would have to convert eighty five from decimal. This is a decimal constant. Mm -hmm. So you have to convert this to hex. Yeah, Oh, we just did that. So this would be 0, 0, 5, 5. Yeah. But then the output would be 85. Oh, okay. Okay. Is everybody, is everybody clear? It's really important that you get this. This is a simple machine, but it's really important that you get all these details yeah. straight. There's just a lot of different ones. There are a lot of different ones. Can't now, and don't you appreciate the fact that we're not, you think there's a lot of details with this? If we were doing a real one, there would be a bazillion more details. <laughs> and there would be, there'd be details that would be float, unimportant details would be floating around all over the place. Can you put in negative two or would you have to put sure. hex? Sure. No, you can put negative two. So if, here, if you do this, if you do deso, if you do deso negative two immediate, this would be three eight. FFFE. FFFE, 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 and what would come out would be negative two. So the assembler knows, as long as you don't put a 0x in front of it, the assembler, the assembler treats this as a decimal number and it puts it here in the, in the right way. Okay. And if it's direct? Ooh, if it's direct. Actually, you could do this. Well, if it's direct, will there always be a 0x in front of it? Well, that's usually what it is, but, not, but the assembler doesn't care. I mean, you could actually do this. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you could do this. Deso, um, you know, like, quote, Q, direct. <laughs> It'll find zero. And what it will do is it will go, it will take this Q, it will, the, the code that gets generated, instead, now, instead of this being 3, 8, what would this be? 3, 9. This would be 3, 9. Here, let's do it. Let's figure it out. Zero, zero, seven, one. Actually, Watch this. We're going to do a really big prediction. And this would be what? Zero, zero. Seven, is Q seven one in hex? <coughs> oh, I know what it's going to do. Yes. And then it would, when it executes, it's going to go to zero, zero, seven, one. It's and going to go out, to that address. To that address and output something. And probably what's going to be there is a zero. zero yeah. Oh, did you run it? Yeah. So, and here, do this. Can you... Um, is there a way to set? Oh, shoot, I don't think we can set. Do you want me to store something? Well, I was going to say, I don't think there's a way to store something at 7.1. Because I think that memory dump is just a dump. It dumps it. To it, the it slot. No, I mean, I don't think you can go to that memory dump and actually write, set something in memory. So, it's too bad it's not editable. I don't think that memory dump pane is editable. But it would be if we were able to put something in seven one, then we could. I could put something in one. Oh, I know what you could do. No, no, do this, do this, do load, do load accumulator. Um, I don't know, like five, and then store accumulator zero zero seven one uh, zero x zero zero seven one direct. Zero x zero. You see what I'm saying? Here, yeah. Let's let's try this. Let's do let's do load let's do lo, uh, load load accumulator five immediate okay and then store accumulator and then des out zero uh, 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 x here zero x zero zero seven one um, direct are you with me mm -hmm. and then do deso quote q comma direct and then stop. And what should come out is five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see? So, isn't that weird? I mean, it's weird, but I mean, the, the point of all of these little exercises is that what the bits get interpreted as, it's all just... There's two things. First of all, what does the assembler translate? And second of all, 
what does the program execute? And what the program executes is determined only by the von Neumann execution cycle. And what are the steps of the von Neumann execution cycle? Fetch, Fetch. execute, decode, increment, increment, increment execute, execute, repeat. Yeah, that's all it does over and over and over again. Okay, so now let me ask you a question. Suppose instead of, suppose instead of given, given these instructions, convert them to the machine language, suppose it was the other way around. Now suppose I gave you a string, actually I did give you a string, I gave you an exercise once I think, where I said, okay, so if this is the machine language, convert it to assembly language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, what did I have to say? Assuming what? Assuming direct. Direct addition? No. Do you remember? You no. Yeah. Assuming that the code was generated by a what? Here, look, ha, look, 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 suppose I give you this. Suppose I give you 5017. Suppose I, uh, suppose I give you 5017 and I say, what assembly language instruction generated this? What's wrong with that? Why is that difficult? Because you don't know if this was generated by a what? It depends on which computer you use. Well, it's pet, pet, pet. Oh, all right. well, Depends on uh, the pseudo-ops. Oh, no. This is a really important point. Well, we don't know whether what? it was going to be a, like a byte or a word or... Exactly. You don't know if this was generated with a dot word. Or a dot byte. Or two dot bytes. Or a dot ASCII. Or a dot ASCII. Or a what? An instruction. Right. It's because it can be or an instruction. Any of those. It could be generated by any of those. You see what I mean? So when I gave you that exercise to Trent, to given this, I said, assuming it was generated by an instruction. You know. You see what I'm saying? It was assuming that. But you, in general, if I just give you this, how do you know that this might have been generated by a dot word or two dot bytes or whatever? Because that dot word 1136, the first part's going to be 0001, which could be an instruction. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So here, that, so... So, what is a disassembler? A disassembler is given the, you know, is to disassemble. Given the machine, go back to the assembly language. But look, you guys, the problem is, is that you can't go back. Why can't you go back? The inverse mapping Yeah, <laughs> right. Because you don't know, you don't know what, there's two, there's many different ways to generate this at the assembly language level. Do you see what, do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just to show you how perverse you can get here, here's another example in figure 5.14. Now, look at this first program. It's character output from 000A using direct addressing, then character output from 00B using direct addressing, and then character output from 000C using direct addressing. If you go down there to, to at, at address A, B, and C, what's at A? What, what, what bits are, what byte is at A? Address A? Five zero. Five zero. And what's at address B? Seven. Seven. And what's at address C? Six. 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 And furthermore, what, how did those bytes get put there? And Dot ASCII so pun. Mm. Are you with me? Well, look, there's nothing to prevent you after you do that stop. There's nothing to prevent you from saying character output 0x765, comma i. Now, if you put that instruction there after stop, what will the assembler generate? What will the assembler? 50766E. Yeah. So if you run that program, it has to output the same thing as that first program because it's the same machine language. And so that second, I, you know, you could put here, if you want some, something, you know, if you can type that up real quick, you put this in here, I guarantee you, output's going to be pun. The bottom one? Yeah. Even though, you, even though it's that character, da, da. actually that figure 514 is probably in the, it's probably in the help system. That's cool. You could probably go to the help system oh. and just click it. Can you go back your side? Please? Sure. Figure 514B. Why not? Yeah, that's the one. 
Yeah, and so I, and if you run that, you look at the assembler listing and run it, what came out is pun, right? Yep. Yep. That, this, this rule of the disassembler kind of has uh, that big pattern at level ISA 3. Um, would that kind of go for almost any level of abstraction? Like something you see at level 4, you couldn't see at level 6? Like you couldn't disassemble. The, the problem is that it's not, yeah, yeah, that's a general problem. Okay. It's actually, it's actually not only, it's not just a, it's not really just a problem, it actually has practical, it has practical implications. It's, it's actually kind of nice that it works this way. Commercially. So here, <laughs> the problem is that it's not unique, the problem is that, that this is not unique. All right? Yeah. That's the problem. Okay, so now, this actually has a very, pra very practical uh, commercial uh, implications because when you buy a product, a software product like Microsoft Word, do you buy the source or do you buy the object? The object. You buy the object. So now, why is it good for Microsoft that this inverse mapping is, di is difficult to do, that this, you know, going from the machine language back, is, why is it good for them that, that that's hard to do? Because then they can't decide. Because keeps their secrets. Yeah, because if you could do it, if you could go reverse engineer and get a, a, a listing, then you could take their, all their huge programming, you could say, and you could add a few features and call it yours and, call it yours and sell it. You know, you know, call it yours, assemble it, and sell it, and boom, and, and so you'd be, uh, you'd have that competitive advantage that and that's you... that's why the whole open source community, you download the source and you can edit it from there, and it's really nice. Yeah, that's right. That's right, but that's not, yeah, but, but in, an with, in, an open source, in an open source product, that's what they provide. They provide the source, because they know that it's difficult to reverse engineer, you know, by going from the, from the uh, machine to the assembly. Now, what is an... So, so it's, it's very difficult to do. You can imagine how hard it would be because, you know, what you would do is you'd have to go find sections of code that are like, because normally the instructions are all kind of grouped together and the data is all kind of grouped together. And so you would have to know, you know, you would have to say, oh, this, if I decode, if I... You have to know which is which. Yeah, you'd have to know which is which. So what you can do is you can try a few instructions, you know, if this is an instruction, this is what it is. Oh, this, it makes sense for this, to, this looks like a group of instructions. And not only that, you can spot, you can usually spot strings. So, you know, if you do a memory dump, you can see, oh, there's an error message, or, you know, there's a, right. some kind of a text message. So I know this is a bunch of text, so this is not instructions, you know. So you can actually go through, but it's kind of like trial and error. Now, who, there is one really important uh, situation where people really need to do that to provide a service for their customers. You know what that is? Where, you're try, where, where what you have is a long string of machine code like this, mm -hmm. and you want to be able to figure out what the, you, go, go up, you know, go up one level of a, a level. Yes. All these people that provide this virus protection software, what do they need to know in order to, to what, provide an effective product? Whether something belongs or not. Yeah, they need to know what, they need to know the code, the source listing of the virus so that they will know how to protect against it. So what happens when a vi new virus comes out into the wild, they do this. They, they reverse, they try, they try to go front, because there's all they have is the machine code in the wild. So then they and so they've got a whole host of tools that uh, enable them to try to recover the program, you know, the, the actual program, so that they can see what the program is doing and analyze it, and then figure out an effective antidote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, but it would be it's very so tedious. It, it'd be very tedious, you know, because because there are tricks that there are tricks that the virus people do to try to hide it. So they'll you know they'll yeah. they'll branch around it and what it looks like data they'll branch and this what in the middle of a data might be an instruction and so oh this looks like data oh no actually it's an instruction and then it, there, it might some of these viruses they might modify their own code so that you know do do and then and then t oh that's this instruction but wait a minute it was not if it wasn't always that instruction then how did this thing modify I mean it's very complicated you see. But it's, uh, it, all, that st all those issues come from the fact that it's, very diff it's, it's not unique. 
you know, just given a string of bits, you don't know whether these are, should, should be interpreted as, a, as data or instructions. You don't know if this is the opcode, this is the start of the opcode, or if this one's the start of the opcode, or, you know, you don't know which. What's, you know, so you have to, it would be very, very difficult because it's not just automatic. You can't automate that. Which is interesting because what's the fundamental question of computer science? What can be automated? What can be automated? So they have tools that can help them, but it can't be completely automated. The recovery of the source from the machine. All right? Is everybody good? Okay, so now all the material up until now, that's what's going to be on the exam on Thursday. And so we'll start reviewing tomorrow, and then we'll have our test on Thursday. Okay, see you next time.